Hi guys, it's Amy. Your golf coach. The other day I was working on my irons and I actually ended up using the lag drill to get my downswing body rotation to go faster and more powerful. So a lot of you guys are a little bit curious of why I ended up choosing the lag drill to get that downswing more dynamic. So let me talk about what exactly lagging is and the reason I chose that drill thoroughly today and I also show you a simple drill so you can get that lagging going all on your own. So let's get in. So what is lagging? Lagging happens in the downswing. When your body starts the downswing, your, your shoulders rotate and then your hands come down and then the club head comes out. On the way down, now this left arm, the lead arm and the shaft makes a certain angle. This is called lag, right? But here what happens is you lag, you lag, you lag and then right around impact it will go boom square. But the most common fault we see is to lose the lag too early in the swing. Boom, different angle here, right? When you've straightened out too early in the downswing, we call it casting. When you lag correctly, now what you're going to achieve is you're going to get that club head to stay back here, you know, hinged as much as possible, and then you're releasing that club, so you're gaining enormous amount of club head speed. And we all know that club head speed equals distance, right? So club head speed gets faster and also if you lag really nicely now your club has a chance to go into the golf ball with a descending angle we call it down below so what we call angle of attack attack angle means club head going into the golf ball with a seven iron you want it to be going down below into it to have a nice backspin so you have nice and high piercing flight and also that down below is going to give you a very clean contact with the golf ball you can compress the ball for just straighter longer shot but a lot of amateurs tend to go into the golf ball casting meaning losing that lag angle and when you do that now that club head bottoms out too early in the in the swing so you're actually bottoming out and then you're catching the ball in an ascending angle. When you catch the ball in an up low angle, uh, attack angle into the golf ball, then that means you're literally going to catch the ground first and then top of the golf ball. So it's either a fat shot or if you manage to avoid to hit the ground behind, then you're just cold topping. So we don't want any of that. We definitely want the attack angle to be nice and steep down below into it. That's why we need to understand how to lag. Why do amateurs cast? Now it has a lot to do with sequence of your golf swing and how you power through the ball. Ideally, you want to coil bottom up on the way back. So boom, your body is, hips are about 45 degrees turned, shoulders are about 90 degrees turned, hands are about ear high, club parallel to the ground or three fourths of the way there and set the club. That's ideal position at the top. And then on the way down, you uncoil by starting the same way, bottom up. Your hips start to rotate, which makes your core rotate, your shoulders rotate, your hands get dragged down because of those movements, and then the club head after. If you lead the downswing with the body, now you can see, you can lag beautifully because all you're doing is just literally setting the club at the top and leaving it in the index on the way down. But if you have the sequence incorrect and now you start the downswing with upper body like this way, or let's say you do use your hips, but then you kind of forget to turn your shoulders and use your hands. Now you're kind of axing down at it, you're hitting down at it, releasing all that lag angle and you're casting. So that's just kind of improvising everything to make sure you make some kind of contact with the golf ball. You know, your body's very smart. So to get that lag going, your body sequence has to be correct. If you can get the body to lead, you will be successful at lagging or it could be vice versa. At first, chicken first, it doesn't really matter. If you start working on that lag drill, then now you're going to realize if you don't use your body correctly, look how high that club head is off the ball. You're going to completely whiff it. So when you start working on that lag angle, sometimes it makes your body have to stay down in your angles and you see how dynamic my body starts moving so body will start to lead all on its own even without you thinking about it 
just by working on that leg angle. And that's exactly what I was doing in my practice, right? <laughs> so I worked on the leg angle because I knew that extra little hold on there is going to get my body to stay low and drive through a little bit more powerfully than I have been. I've been basically standing there flicking my hands through and not using the body very much. That's why my club head speed has gone down. <laughs> I was trying to come back up, we'll get there. But that is why I chose to work on the lag, not necessarily to really gain that angle, but to really get my body to stay low and really drive through the golf ball. So now the lag helps you to go down low into the golf ball for cleaner square contact. And also it'll give you higher club head speed. Now we have the third one. It keeps your body nice and low and power rotation through the wall. Three things you get out of lagging beautifully. All right, drills. If you've seen my videos before, before, you know I've used the stick drill. This is the most common drill you get for lagging. So basically you're doing a little chip shot from here. You're using the body, keeping this lag angle and just chipping through this way. Boom. You see how this shaft and the stick is perpendicular to the ground now? This is the most common practice, but I do notice a lot of my students trying this drill, but they end up hitting themselves Ow. on every single shot and I, they don't feel it. Maybe because it's winter and they're wearing, you know, thicker clothing, but I see my students going boom, boom. I'm like, uh, does it hurt? And they'll be like, oh yeah, I feel it. I'm like, you're supposed to not hit yourself. This is what the drill's for. And then we'll just laugh about it. But because I noticed some people not being able to resist the hands from releasing, even with the stick here, I have a different drill. Ta-da! This one, I don't think I have this on my shop yet. I've been using this for a long time called Power Leg Pro. Uh, I believe I got this from Amazon. I'll just make your life easier and put a link down below for you. It's not very expensive at all. So basically you're gonna put it on your trail hand into the index. Cortex baby, <laughs> into the index. Okay, so boom, you get it in the angle and you make sure you're touching with the back of your hands until you make contact with the golf ball. So let's start with the small swing. So I feel like I set the club, which we worked on before, set the club and leave it there, keep that angle there, and then just really use the body through. So small shots. See how much I'm using my body? And I wasn't even trying to on that one. I was just trying to make contact with the golf ball. But because there's an angle here, if I don't use much body, I'll whiff it. So I really have to get down into it. So small shots, so solid. Can you hear the difference? It's just less effort on my hands and my shoulders, but more in my legs and my hips and my core. Remember, I do have bad back, so I can't separate my upper body and lower body that much. I'll throw my back off. So I'm just turning everything together and I'm sure it applies to a lot of you guys out there with bad backs. Just a thought. Okay, half swings. So it kind of feels like a punch shot from like under a tree trying to keep that ball low because you're basically like de-lofting through the wall, holding off so you don't release feels like. So basically you're preventing yourself from like casting and adding loft. Boom, and just leave it there. Boom, and just leave it there. Boom, wow. That was really solid. <laughs> so basically in my practice, I was doing this drill without the training aid, but I really want to show you this. The stick is great because if you hit yourself, you know you did it incorrectly, but this is the opposite. With this aid, you can feel your back of your hand touching the training aid. So you want to leave that hinged through the ball, right? That, that wrist cup in your trail hand. So if you don't feel the training aid, now you've done something incorrect, which is totally opposite to if you feel the stick hit yourself, then you did it incorrectly. So the opposite, right? So sometimes you need that to get your wrist control going better, okay? And you know, every individual is so different. You can sometimes like 
feel one drill really click and work for you and the other drill like does nothing for you. That's why you need to try several different drills. Wow. Wait, I really want to see my swing. Oh, that feels so good. Am I moving okay, guys? It feels great. So if you lag correctly, which is that angle with the lead arm and the shaft, if you're lagging beautifully, you get three things out of it. First is the angle of attack into the golf ball gets nice and steep down below into it. So you get clean contact with really square face and nice compression on the golf ball. And then number two is by lagging, you're creating a lot of club head speed at impact. Faster club head speed means a lot of distance. We love that. Number three, this is the important thing for me. Now, because I am lagging, now I'm forced to stay down with my body and get really aggressive with my body turn, which is helping my goal, which is to rotate faster in the downswing. So you're gaining three things with one drill. So even if you think, thinking, you know, I'm okay with my lagging, you still want to try this drill. It might just help you with the tack angle or that club head speed or that body rotation into the golf ball. Okay guys, how was it today? I hope you're able to follow along and now I'm sure you are clear on what lagging is and how to work on it. So I will look forward to your progress. And once you start getting this lag going, the next question I usually get is, I have too much pressure in my hands because I've been working on that lag or I keep going into the golf ball with an open club face. I forgot how to release from this lagged position. So the next lesson, I'm actually gonna go right into how to release the club so we can master the lag and release to help you hit that golf ball longer and straighter. So please keep an eye out for that next episode. Thank you so much for golfing with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.